this is a um, update on this um, bus blind sign that I've been building. I haven't done anything on it for months and months, but I decided I'd better try and finish it off and get it done. So the last couple of weeks I've spent a bit of time finishing it off. Um, what I have now is basically it's mechanically done. Um, it all works properly. It doesn't have the blind on it at the moment because I'm just um, I need that off to demonstrate how it works. And I still need to make the the metal housing for it, which will be made out of 1.6 millimeter aluminium. Um, I can't do that just yet because I uh, I'm working on another project here, which is just this little car I'm building, uh, which has a an aluminium skin and. I can't finish the bus sign until I've finished the car, so I know how much aluminium I've got spare. But we can have a look at the sign and see how it works. Um, there have been a few changes since I, I last updated it. Uh, one of the main ones is I've fitted a, a smaller wiper motor here. Um, this is a motor that my friend Mike gave me, which I think is from the, the rear window of a Subaru car. Um, it's just a lot smaller. I fitted that because I actually want the housing to to look somewhat like a double-decker bus. Um, so it's going to have these curved corners and it's also curves on the front edges as well. Um, the smaller motor just means it's easier for me to do that. Uh, I also raised the rollers up by adding an extra block in here. Um, that just required cutting the blocks and fitting longer bolts. The bolts are captive down in this piece. The other thing I did is Previously I was trying to set the tension on this by, by putting shims underneath the motor mount to adjust the, the tension on the chain. I found that didn't really work very well, so what I've done instead is actually made a, a little tensioner here, which is basically a, an idler wheel on a spring. And all that does is keeps the tension on the chain, keeps the chain tight against the, the sprocket wheel here. Um, the sprocket is attached basically to the shaft of the motor. Uh, the shaft is just a round shaft with, with two sides filed flat. So, you can't really see here, but the, um, the inside of the sprocket just has a, a hole cut in it that matches that shaft. Uh, the shaft uses an 8mm nut, so I'm using these 8mm couplers. Uh, I actually made up these, it's a coupler with a short piece of, of bar welded to it, soldered to it actually, um, which is what's letting me do this drive here. Uh, the drive is just a piece of flexible oil hose, which just lets me basically turn off the motor here and, and, and send the drive down to this unit. Uh, I'll get to this one in a second. The um, nut here is held, it's basically done up really tight, and then there's just a, a little bent over tab washer there which sits up against the flat of the nut, and that's what stops it coming undone. Um, the drive, as I said, goes down this flexible coupling to this unit. Now this is a limit switch unit. Basically, the, the drive drives this threaded rod, which is running in two bearings, um, and it pushes this captive block backwards and forwards. It's actually sliding on this white stuff, which is a piece of um, PTFE, which is Teflon, just to give it a nice frictionless surface. Uh, on the top of the block are these two little plates. Uh, this bottom one's fixed, but the top one you can adjust. It's got these slots in it, so you can slide this backwards and forwards. And what these plates do is they hit against these micro switches. Now, the switches are just connected, basically, uh, in series with the motor and the, um, the switch here, which is just a a double pole sort of switch um, to change the direction of the motor to power the motor. Um, I just made up this little switch panel here which has the switch and a fuse and also a connection which goes straight to the battery which is to let me charge up the battery here. The battery is just a, a 1.2 amp hour 12 volt uh, sealed lead acid and these are the relays which actually control the power going to the motor. Uh, it's a very simple circuit. It basically, you switch the switch one way, it sends power one way through the motor, you switch the switch the opposite way, and the power reverses direction, reversing the motor. The limit switches just stop it when it gets to the end of its travel. Now this is all wired up, this is all working, so we can 
show how this works. Uh, you can see, you flick the switch down, the motor turns, which turns the little threaded rod, and eventually this, this block moves all the way across, hits the switch. If we go back the opposite direction, you can see the block move. Basically slides along very slowly. Uh, the, the wipers actually have two speeds. There's two windings on these wiper motors, and I'm using the slower one here. Um, if I hooked it up the other way, it would actually spin faster. But you can see the, the limit switch lets you go so far, and then it stops. It just, it just basically stops the rollers dead. And that's about it. Um, I also have this, this thing here that I bought, which is a it's just a, a small solar battery charger. It's used for topping up car batteries. And I figure I can use that to, um, to keep the battery in this thing topped up from time to time. And there's just a, a cable which goes in and, and plugs into this little connector here. Uh, that's basically it. You um, flick the switch one way and it turn, turns one way. Flick it the other, it goes the other. And it stops when it gets too far. Uh, the next thing for me to do is put the blind back on and show how it works with that. And then it's all basically complete until I put the housing on. Um, the housing will just be a single piece, single cover. That'll just slide on the top of the whole thing. Um, there'll be a few captive nuts around the edge, which some screws will go into to hold it in place. And just a glass window in the front. Uh, and that should finish it off.